Welcome back to Smitty's Learning Room. Today we're going to continue having a look at the focus question from Core 2. How does the acquisition of skill affect performance? And we're specifically going to have a look at characteristics of the learner. So when we have a look at where does this come from in the syllabus, we know that it comes from the focus question, how does the acquisition of skill affect performance? And we come down to the learn about section of characteristics of the learner. So for example, personality, hereditary, um, confidence, prior experience and ability. And after you've had a look at these concepts, you should be able to describe how the characteristics of the learner can influence skill acquisition and the performance of skills. So we start by having a look at what are some of the characteristics of a learner that can actually affect skill performance and acquisition. So we know we've definitely got five and these are personality, heredity, ability, confidence and prior experience. And in this video we're going to have a look at these in a little bit in depth and try and provide you with some examples that you can use. So we start by having a look at the personality characteristics of a learner and there's lots of different personalities which can affect the way a learner can acquire a skill or affects their performance. Some of the most common ones are confidence, curiosity, motivation and reliability. Now these um, personality traits are obviously going to have a huge impact on how the learner learns new skills but also how that they perform those skills under certain environments or under pressure or something like that. So when we have a look at personality, it will contribute to minor influences on skill acquisition. So for example, those willing to attempt new skills because of an increased confidence or curiosity will be more likely to invest time in and improve um, and be motivated um, and be less distracted because of that. So obviously we've got an athlete or a learner who is you know, curious or confident, they're going to probably invest more time in it because they actually want to see what the outcome is. Where if we've got a learner who's not so confident, they might sort of take a step back and it might take them quite some time to learn that skill. The next characteristic of a learner that we have a look at is heredity. Now, heredity can provide skill learning benefits where genetic features are significant in the learning process. So the thing is that um, when we look at hereditary, well, what is that? It's basically genetic things that we picked up from our parents um, or other family members down the line. And so, for example, um, if we look at other aspects of HSC Core 2 and we look at fast and slow twitch fibres and usually they're sort of genetic uh, things that we attain from our parents or our grandparents. So if our, you know, our father or our mother has sort of, you know, a rather muscular build or has some fast twitch fibres, as we grow, we will possibly develop those as well. And so therefore we'll obviously have an impact on the way we learn skills or the way we can perform um, because of those fast twitch fibres. Um, another area of heredity which can be passed on is what we call somatype. So they're our body types. And um, if we have a look at like an ectomorph, an endomorph, and mesomorph from way back in you know, sort of year 10 health, we look at how that can actually impact on maybe perhaps the sports we choose or that we're most su uh, suited to. So, for example, um, you know, if you've got a long family history of sumo wrestlers, that's obviously a body frame and type that's suited to that sport, which can be genetically passed down from generation to generation. So moving on, we love the next characteristic that we have a look at is confidence. And so we talked about this in relation to personality. And when we look at confidence, people are more likely to attempt a new skill when they have confidence. So confident people are also less likely to be put off by experiences that they have in that early stage of learning. So in their cognitive stage, if they have some negative experience, if they have a lot of confidence, they're more likely to be motivated to continue on to improve with that. Um, and it's important for coaches to... Um, to promote confidence within the learners, to try new skills and improve performance and provide a platform or an environment that um, promotes confidence for athletes. Now, confidence builds a resiliency in the cognitive stage of skill acquisition. So that's that first stage, remember, where we're learning the new skill, 
we often have a lot of faults and la rather large faults. So if we can continue to um, develop confidence amongst learners or if they have internal confidence within themselves, they're most, most likely to push on from the cognitive through to the associative stage of skill development. And obviously that we know the more confidence that a learner or an athlete has, the more likely they are to attempt new and more difficult skills. So the next characteristic we look at is prior experience. Now, some skills that occur in different sports can have similar movement patterns. And because of this, um, a movement that occurs in one sport, we can mem memorize that and we can use it in another sport. So we don't have to relearn that skill as such, or we may just have to, to tweak that skill a little bit. So positive transfer of learning is when you learn skills that are similar to what you already know. So for example, if you've already learned how to do a forehand serve in tennis, um, when you go to say perhaps learn an overarm serve in volleyball, it's very much similar action of one foot in front of the other, throwing the ball up in the air, back your right hand or dominant hand behind your back and then up to hit the ball. So this is where we have a positive transfer of learning. So the learner actually can remember what they previously learnt from a tennis serve and now apply that to a volleyball overhead serve. Um, negative transfer of learning can happen when prior learning makes it difficult to learn a new skill. So we've got ingrained in our head how we do something um, which is similar to the new skill but it's different and this is um, evident in sports like tennis and badminton where a tennis forehand is very um, you know similar to a badminton however tennis rotation can come from the shoulder and the elbow whereas if a badminton um, the forehand is all in the flick of a wrist and so Generally, when people go from tennis to badminton, they have difficulties transferring those skills because it's actually a different type of skill where they think it's the same skill, hence a negative transfer of um, skill for prior experiencing. Um, now, the thing that you have to remember about this prior experiencing is that adapting to a new skill um, or a movement pattern requires a conscious thought pattern each time. So we have to sort of focus and so... Therefore, sometimes um, athletes in the cognitive stage of skill development have difficulty transferring prior experience across because they have to focus on so many things as it is. So finally, we have a look at um, ability as being a characteristic of a, of a learner. And quite often when we watch sports or, you know, commentators might make comments and say, oh, they just look so natural. They're just flowing. You know, look at that style. Um, that's why we're talking about this concept of natural ability. So an athlete who displays grace and fluency and an extra level of skill and it just looks like it's natural, like it's meant to happen. Nothing is being forced. And, um Whilst athletes train hard to complete these skills, um, ability or natural ability assists in which the speed in which they can learn these skills. So they probably spend very little time in that cognitive stage and move to associative. And if they're an elite athlete, may even start in that associative stage and move to the autonomous stage quite quickly. Um, there's obviously aspects that contribute to um, the ability of a learner and um, these sort of these aspects are kinesthetic sense and multi limb coordination, reaction time, and perceptive sense. So when we look at these three concepts, a, a kinesthetic sense is an awareness of a body position and muscle movement during performance. So this is usually for athletes at that autonomous stage. They know where every part of their body is and where it needs to be and then they can adjust their body to improve performance. So a great example of this is a diver. So when they initially take off the platform, they may realise that they put too much pressure on the left foot, so therefore they may have to rotate a little bit more on their right-hand side. So they've, it's like they've got this sixth sense where they're able to sort of understand where their body's at and rearrange their body to allow for a perfect or a better performance. Whereas if someone who doesn't have that sense won't be able to adapt to that and therefore their performance won't be as good. 
Um, when we look at the concept of multi-limb coordination, this is the capacity to structure movements that involve many body parts into a fluent and effective performance. Now, this could be from something like, again, like diving or um, a gymnastics routine, or it could be something similar, similar like getting an intercept in a rugby game and running halfway down the field and kicking a field goal. So, you know, the concepts of actually going in for the intercept and using their arms and then legs to run and the coordination of actually dropping the ball to the ground to do a drop kick over the goal requires lots of limbs coordinated in one thing to put, be able to do that movement. And um, obviously someone with natural ability will be able to do that quite easily as opposed to someone who doesn't necessarily have as much natural ability and may have to break those skills down um, a lot more to try and be able to complete that concept of kicking a field goal. Um, the last one is the perceptive sense. So the capacity to receive and interpret information effectively to enhance the quality of response. And so when we think about that, that's a little bit similar to a kind of synthetic sense in that um, the perceptive sense is that they can perceive things that are going to happen. So they might actually be visualising a play halfway down the field um, and then sort of go, oh, I actually need to be um, in that position down there. I shouldn't be halfway up the field. So this is where you see um, like invasion games. So like soccer, netball, basketball, hockey, where a player, a forward may see the ball coming down and realise that they need to move themselves into a different space to be able to receive a pass to have an advance at goal. So that's a perceptive sense, that sort of having a look and being able to read play a little bit better. So in summary, there are probably a lot more characteristics that we can have a look at, but the five main ones that you really need to um, be able to understand and apply are personality, heredity, ability, confidence and prior experience. Now remember that you've got some really, you've got to make sure you've got some really strong examples to be able to apply this to, um, to have a look at ways that characteristics of the learner can either both positively or positively or negatively influence um, skill acquisition.